Alec Baldwin, you might remember this actor, known for many great movies, Beetlejuice, he was in that, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, he murdered a woman, you might remember that. He's doing an interview. They are promoting this thing. Everything is a show. In 2021, 20, everything is a show. A woman is dead. She died on a movie set. Unbelievably strange circumstances. And of course, because it's Hollywood... Alec Baldwin and George Stephanopoulos have to get together and talk about the tragedy that happened. This is going to be all about Alec Baldwin. And I swear to you, like my football bets, I wish and I hope my bookie says, will Alec Baldwin cry during this year? Every penny I've made on football would go, yes, Alec Baldwin is crying in this interview. Guaranteed. He's a fucking actor. Of course he's going to cry. Oh, the poor guy. And there's dummies that'll sit there and go, he feels so bad about it. No, this is, this is called salvaging your career. Now, I don't think if anyone can shoot and murder a woman and resume their acting career, I got to say Alec Baldwin's right up there. No one ever thought he was a nice guy. I mean, murdering a woman was a little out of the realm of possibility. But look how silly we were. He murdered a woman. But he's this personality and this kind of actor and the roles he takes and everything, who I think will do a few of these things, these interviews, and roll right back in to a fantastic acting career that he's had for many years. Uh, some actors could do that. I don't know. Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks, too much of a nice guy to murder somebody and then get back to just being, oh, what? I made fire! Fire! I fired the gun! I... But Alec Baldwin, we kind of expected him to do something stupid. We do every so often. So it's not a surprise. And, you know, he is good. I'll give it to him. I've watched a lot of Alec Baldwin movies, and goddamn if he ain't a good actor. And who am I to judge? There's actors out there that have literally raped young girls from poltergeist to death. Rob Reiner is an idiot. Just throwing that out there as a random... <laughs> So he's doing this interview, um, Alec Baldwin, with George Stephanopoulos. And uh, there's already the dramatic graphics out there, the kind of shadowy Alec Baldwin and the, the, the text that's kind of, ooh, tragic text, tragic text font. <laughs> and um, he's, uh, they've already said a couple of things that uh, are exposed in this interview. Alec Baldwin says, I did not pull the trigger. I did not pull the trigger. Now, uh, most people, there it is. Alec Baldwin says he did not pull trigger of gun in fatal movie set shooting. Look at him. He is a handsome guy when he's not all alcohol bloated, right? Yeah, he's had work done on his eyes. Definitely. Anyway. Or he should just play pirates now or sea, old sea captains. He could play the Titanic captain now with that, right? The remake of Titanic. And they'll just have him as the captain. Uh, now, while this sounds crazy, and there's our conspiratorial things, uh, he didn't pull the trigger, he said, I actually understand this. Depending on the weapon, I will explain. If this was an authentic old Colt 45 Western revolver, these guns uh, were not made with the greatest safety features on them. Uh, nowadays, there are so many redundancies and things that have to engage and plates that need to be in front of other things as you're pulling the trigger in order for, which is the final 
part of firing a gun, that firing pin striking the primer of the bullet, which sends the bullet off. In between the firing pin and the mechanism, there's safety features. Now, one of these I knew from, I had a, a Ruger, Ruger 45s, uh, six shooters. And you would cock the uh, the hammer back and you wouldn't see a firing pin. The old guns, the firing pin was literally on the hammer. You pulled that hammer back and there's a pointy piece of metal on the hammer because that's what fell and snapped onto the bullet and fired the bullet. Nothing in between the hammer and the firing pin. Nowadays, with safety features, as you pull the trigger, a plate comes up and takes up the space between the hammer and the firing pin. So the trigger has to be pulled, the plate comes up, and now the hammer strikes the plate, the plate strikes the firing pin, the bullet fires. But unless the trigger's pulled, you could fucking drop that thing on the hammer. There's no contact between the hammer and the firing pin, so it doesn't fire. Now, older guns had things that were called quarter, half, and full cocked. <laughs> he said full. Full cock. You would quarter cock a gun, an old 45, because if, if the firing pin is on the hammer and the hammer's down and the cylinders are empty, that firing pin's going to keep you from, from spinning the cylinder when you're trying to load it. So whenever you loaded an old school 45, you had a click quarter cock it. The hammer comes back a quarter of the way and, and click, clicks. Now the cylinder's free to spin. You open the gate and you load in, click each round like that. You could spin it. You close the gate. Now here was the tricky part. You had to literally pull the trigger and slowly let the hammer down on uh, a round. Now this was dangerous in and of itself because if the hammer ever struck anything, the fucking gun would go off. Contrary to popular belief, a six-shooter is usually only a five-shooter because you leave that one cylinder empty so that that firing pin is not resting on a primer and, and can't be uh, fired if, if the hammer gets struck by anything. Now, I hear Alec Baldwin was practicing a cross-draw, quick-draw for the next scene. Now, what you want to do when you draw a six-gun because it's not a double action, it's a single action. The, the pistol has to be fully cocked before you pull the trigger. If you just pull the trigger, nothing will happen. With other guns, like a, a 38 snub nose, a police revolver, 38, you'll, you'll see you can pull the trigger and the hammer goes, click, click, click. You don't have to touch the hammer just by pulling the trigger. With these old school six shooters, you need to pull the hammer back first, then fire. Pull the hammer back first, then fire. That's why for rapid fire, they would hold the trigger down and do this. They'd fan it because now it's, it's working because the trigger's pulled. It's the only way it, it works. So if you're doing a quick draw, you want to cock the gun as you're bringing it out. That's what a, a quick draw was. Whether it's on your hip here, you go like this, you're cocking it so that by the time you're level, it's fully cocked, boom, you pull the trigger, it's ready to go. You don't go like this, cock it, and then shoot. You're, you're fucking dead by then. I'm assuming, and it's only an assumption, that they were using an authentic, old-school Colt 45 revolver. He was practicing this quick draw. He's cocking it. He didn't get quite to quarter cock where the ratchet would have engaged on the hammer and held it back. And when he let go of it, it struck the round and fired it without him ever touching the trigger. And that's, I, I honestly think that's what happened, if he's being honest. And I don't, you know, he's a piece of shit, but why is he going to lie that I never pulled the trigger? It's, it's kind of a crazy thing to say, especially if you're not familiar enough with guns, and, and especially those type of guns, to understand that you can fire it without pulling the trigger. If you are just shy of quarter cocked and you let go of the hammer and that thing slams down and fires around. So 
I'm thinking that's what would have uh, happened. Um, still, had the round get in there. Why was he even practicing that move, pointing it at people? You still shouldn't do that. Uh, I used to practice uh, quick draws with my, I had a Ruger uh, Super Single 6 uh, 22. My dad got it for me for my birthday. Uh, I didn't go to school and shoot my friends like this kid did recently when his dad got him a gun at 15. He instantly just went, oh, I'm going to shoot some of these motherfuckers that bullied me. <laughs> Here, son, here's a gun. And I was bullied. I sh should have shot Gabriel Mayers. Gabriel Mayers punched me in the face. He sucker punched me in front of uh, Vaughn's. I was very, very upset about it. And I had guns. And I fantasized about shooting him. I did. Why wouldn't you? But I never would have dreamt of shooting him. Jesus Christ. This kid, a little different. But I used to practice with this thing. And I would unload it. I would make sure the thing was completely unloaded. Ooh, spin that thing around. Close the gate. Put it in my holster. I had a great low on the leg, tie down holster, western holster. All the bullets were on the fucking, in the little fucking bullet holders on the belt. It was fucking awesome. And I would practice cocking the gun as you bring it out. And I wouldn't even fire. I wouldn't even fire it. Like, I was, I just wouldn't. And that was in my room against a wall or some shit, you know. I would do that. And then I'd jerk off because I was 13. It's what you did in your room. You quick draw, and then you quick draw. So I, I'm uh, I'm practicing, and there were plenty of times my thumb slipped off of the hammer while I was bringing it up and slapped back down. Now, like I said, it was unloaded, but also this was a Ruger with the modern safety mechanism where you had to pull the trigger, that plate would slide up, and it would be the intermediary between the hammer and the firing pin. So even if it was loaded, it wouldn't go off because I wasn't pulling the trigger. Um, but you could see, again, like I said, how an older school uh, gun like that with the firing pin actually on. And I would think for close-up shots, maybe, you'd want to see a gun that was authentic back in those days. So the firing pin would be on the hammer. You would look at a gun and be like, Wait, there's no firing pin on the hammer if it's a close-up because the hammer's a flat front on it. And you're like, no, there was a firing pin on that fucking thing. Uh, so maybe they were using it to be authentic and this collection of fuck-ups happened uh, that resulted in a, a woman being shot by uh, the inimitable Alec Baldwin, who will give an interview with a, uh, I'm sure, Kevlar vested George Stephanopoulos. <laughs> that would be great. She was someone who was loved by everyone who worked with and liked by Except everyone. Except you, who you with killed and her. Admired. I would have. I would have had ten thousand dollars. I find it hard to believe that. It just doesn't seem. It doesn't seem real to me. <laughs> Alec Baldwin. Said much in it is toughest role ever. Accident. Why speak out now? Why speak out now? I killed someone. I think the big question, and the one you must have asked yourself a thousand times, how could this have happened? <laughs> it's all about you him! You it as a one in a trillion shot, and the gun was in your hand. Ah! How do you come to terms with that? It Tomorrow wasn't die. for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, no, no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. What did you think happened? How did a real bullet get on I that set? That. I have no idea. Someone put a live bullet in a gun. A bullet that wasn't even supposed to be on the property. George never to actors like George Clooney who say that every time He's they were a handed a gun, they it themselves? <laughs> Your emotions are so clearly so right there on the surface. You felt shock. You felt anger. You felt sadness. Do you feel guilt? Oh, we don't you get. You're not a victim, we don't get to hear the answer. Is this yet? the worst thing that's ever happened to you? Yes. Ah. Yep. All right. Well, my daughter was yeah. being a little piggy. Because I, I, I think back. Uh oh. And I think of what could I have done? Not Alec shoot Baldwin her. Unscripted. You could have not shot her. Alec Baldwin unscripted. This is. It's so Hollywood. Hollywood's all about. They have no 
fucking clue about how people really think and, and perceive them. Everything they do is amazing and golden and perfect. You don't do this. <laughs> I mean, a statement you put out, you do things that... This is what you do when you're trying to salvage your career. Uh, and like I said, he'll be fine. But this is a move a publicist puts together. And they choose... Do you know how many times... I wonder how many times... The dead woman's name, whatever it is, I don't know. Look, I didn't shoot her. Came up when they were discussing who should do the interview, what network, what the graphics should look like, the promo piece, how it should be cut. Like, they're like, do you feel guilty about, but all right, uh, here's his answer. Yeah, don't put that in. And the only reason they didn't put that in is because they know people want to see the answer. So they'll watch. So it's all, again, about ratings. Of course, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to talk down to you like you're naive. Of course you understand it's about ratings. And we all understand that that's what TV's about. But when they try to present it as something else, like it's Alec Baldwin sharing his emotions. Oh, God, stop it. Just stop it. Hollywood, Washington, Madison Avenue. Have we had enough? Have we had enough? Oh.